exhibitions in the country is in its final month at the Baltimore Museum of Art. It's a pretty cool concept. It's actually super rad. I'm really into it. It's called Guarding the Art, and it was curated entirely by 17 of the museum's security guards. We're going to talk to two of those guards a little bit later, but first, everybody say hi to Usma, the museum's curator, and Amy, a trustee at the museum. Give it up for me, y'all. So say hi to Sam and Pat. Hi, right, guys, congratulations. Congratulations. It's such a cool idea. I've been talking about this in the commercial break, but it's such a unique idea. Like, where did it come from? Well, two years ago, Usma and I were having dinner, and we were talking about the guards at the Baltimore Museum of Art and how mm -hmm. they spend more time with art than anyone else. Mm -hmm. And so I went home that night and I started thinking, wouldn't it be interesting to hear from the guards about the art that they like and what they would choose if they could hang art on the walls and what was interesting and what resonated with them? Yeah. And then in the middle of the night, I woke up and I thought, guarding the art, an exhibition curated, created just by the guards. It's such a, I mean, a fantastic idea that I can't believe it hasn't even been thought of yet. Yeah. So, like, how does it work? So, how did they curate it? Yeah, well, um, first of all, Kelly, there's 99,000 objects in our museum. And so, so a few. A few. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to shift through. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, yeah. And we said to them, you can have your pick of any. You can have your pick of what's on the walls. You can go through all of our vaults. And we said, you can pick up to three. And they went ahead, we worked with them to find the right objects, and it's been a beautiful process. It's so cool, just because we were discussing, like, you know, art is in the eye of the beholder, you know? So it's interesting to see what everybody gravitates towards. Do y'all like art? Are you in? You have to. Your mom's an artist, right? Yeah, I like, suppose I, I better have I to. think she'd be disappointed. She'd be really disappointed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think it sounds fascinating. And are, are they, is it very eclectic? Are they sort of pieces from all over? Or? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Wow. You'll see things that you never thought you would see before. Wow. I love that. Are you into yeah. art? Are you? No. In, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying a lot to you, no. I no, mean, but wait, do you I find copy it fun? somebody or No, because you said you like thrifting. So what I find fun when you go to thrift stores sometimes is that you go there and then you find these pieces that are just like, who knows whose home they were in, but it's like a really cool piece. And you, you keep that? the frame and put what you want. <laughs> <laughs> to each his own <laughs> or her own. Okay, so some, some of this is, is personal for you, right? Because you didn't come from the background of the art world, right? No, I didn't. I, my parents um, were born in India. I was born in Pakistan. I came here as a young child, so I'm an immigrant. Mm. And Indian and Pakistani families, you become one of three things, a doctor, a lawyer, an oh engineer. <laughs> and so I decided that I needed to go into one of these three fields, right? So I went on to law school. And then I was a criminal prosecutor at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Wait, this was like your first job? <laughs> Mine was like Papa John's. Like, <laughs> I, was like, like, I worked in a movie theater. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So that's like your first kind of vocation and then you ended up switching. Yeah, 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 because it was an exhausting and very stressful, you can imagine, crime in New York City. Um, and just dealing with all of the emotions around the criminal justice system and trying to help victims, but also seeing, you know, the various aspects of, of life in the city um, for How those. How did that shift happen, though, to the art world? I would go to museums in my spare time for just relief. And um, I realized that that's something that was still in me from my undergrad days. And so I went back to night school, got my master's then went and did the full Monty and got my PhD and then started working at the Portrait Gallery at the Smithsonian in DC. And I realized my previous job was helping the public as a criminal prosecutor. And then as a curator, I was helping the public as a curator. And so I realized that the two had had converged, but I was always interested in helping people. I love that, it's in a different way, yeah. So did working with the guards change your perspective on art? Because everybody's different. We like, you know, it's subjective, art. Totally, yeah. totally. I think it's um, been an interesting experience because we think of you need to have an art history degree, you know, you need to, you need to know art to mm -hmm. walk in and talk about art. But actually this show, this exhibition, has proven that you don't need to know about art. Why you keep looking at me? I don't want to. <laughs> She's trying to win you over. I am. You She's am. trying to get you to keep the painting in the frame. <laughs> I'm not going to no museum. Keep talking. <laughs> We're going, Pat. We're going together. You're going to walk out of here with a Matisse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me a Patisse. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to walk out of here with a ticket to Baltimore to come see it. It's yeah. going to be cool. I just love, I think that's exciting too, like going to an exhibition like that and like, it's relatable in right. a sense of like, okay, these are like, 
everyday people just like me, like going, you know what I'm saying? Going in and like liking what they like and yeah. there's no art degree to buy. It's just something that moved them. I think that's and very fascinating. And it makes it very accessible. You, know, you yeah. can relate you when, you, when you go to the show and you'll see a story, you'll read a story about the particular piece of art and why that guard chose mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. it. It'll stir something in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I first heard about this, I thought the guards brought in something to be art. So I was like, oh. Now see, oh. that's a whole other idea. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's a whole other idea. I would have brought in something really silly to sell. Uh, <laughs> but I think it's beautiful to see what everybody gravitates to. Joining us now are two of the guards who help select pieces for guarding the art. Joan here on the couch with us and Kellen. <laughs> Kellen is dialed in from Baltimore. What's up, Kellen? Uh, so I'll start America. with you. Was, oh, hello. Um, so, Joan, I'm going to start with you. So, how long have you been working with the museum? Hi, Kelly. Hi. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I've been working with the Baltimore Museum of Art for six years. Okay. I'm a mother of eight, a grandmother of nine. Did you say mother of eight? Yes, mother of eight. I should have brought you one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. I have no artistic background whatsoever. Yeah. However, when I was in third grade, I did sculpture a hot dog and of <laughs> a, a bun. It's a callback. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But other than that, none. Um, yeah. Working at the museum is so wonderful. I thought when I got there, I would just be like, stop this, stop that. You know, can't touch the art, can't get, do clothes or whatever. Yeah. Uh, which make us the bad guys. However, yeah. I've gotten a lot out of it. Um, I do love the fact when the children would come in for the uh, children's groups when we had them. Yeah. That was very beautiful because children are wonderful and yeah. I love their exuberance. Apparently you like them. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do love yeah. them. I was like, woo, I, was I like, love you like them. them. Yeah. Yeah, so That's fun so when they're excited. on like field trips and stuff. Yes, I love that when yeah. the children would come in. Yes, that was the best That's part. That's cool. Really, I love it. That's yes. awesome. Well, Kellen, what about you? How long have you been working at the museum? I have been working at the museum for nine years and also thank you for having me on the show. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yes, and like Ms. Joan, I had no experience or desire to participate in the arts whatsoever, aside from my studies as a classical voice major at Towson University. I had been away for a while, and then I came back. But uh, during my time at the museum, I was able to have a very large, a very greater uh, appreciation for the art world, for the arts, and being able to share that love of the art with visitors and then apply that sort of knowledge into my performance practice as a music student, as a voice student, whether it is preparing for my senior recital, whether it is singing in the university chorale, whether it is preparing to sing in my first opera. It, I would not have been able to have any of these opportunities if it wasn't for my time at the Baltimore Museum of Art. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Beautiful inspiration. So Sam and Miss Pat, have you ever worked on a project that made you passionate about something like unexpected? Like maybe a role or anything that you've ever played? You know, obviously acting, you, you put, your, you put your, your own story into it. But I think these guys are so inspiring because, as you said, they, they don't have an artistic background per se or, or in that field. And then they, they have this connection to a piece of art. And it sounds so interesting to like hear about the story behind why you chose each piece of art. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And that's I'm going to take cool Pat there. I know. Anna, <laughs> We're going. That's their first date. She loved um, <laughs> I so, love it. So you each got to, to select art, like he was saying. So what made you choose what you chose? Like, what did you choose? Oh, okay. I chose a water bottle and I chose a basket. They're artifact more so than anything. And um, yes, I, I, I like the fact that uh, years ago, centuries ago, you know, to be able to carry water or something central to all of our need. And that is for... That's beautiful. Yeah, that's a beautiful basket and mm -hmm. you could store uh, your personal things in it, or money or jewelry mainly, yeah. you know? And um, it's wonderful for the environment. Back then they thought practically like, you know, this is good for the environment. Unlike today, we have all these landfills of plastic water bottles, whereas yeah. though our ancestors were very creative and smart yeah. in the way that they thought about Respectful. using yes, those type of artworks. Or and artworks. like, I love that you called, because the first thing you said, I chose a water bottle, I was expecting to turn around <laughs> and be like, plastic Aquafina? I don't know, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, what? You picked something I wouldn't, my brain wouldn't have even gone there, it but of something. course your mom, you're practical. So, yes. yeah. There's something about the guard as well, right? Yeah, yeah. She have eight keys, she thirsty. <laughs> she thirsty. <laughs> it's a lot of, lot of mouths. Yes. So, so Kellen, what did you choose? So one of the paintings that I chose to enter into the exhibition is called Normandy Landscape 
by Hale Woodruff from 1928. Oh, that's Hale Woodruff was one of the up and coming African American artists to emerge from out of the Harlem Renaissance as a voice major, as someone who's pursuing a career in singing. I came to choose my selections from the mindset of if these paintings could sing, what songs would they sing? And so, because Hale Woodruff painted this painting in France, it made me think of a Mozart art song, a French art song uh, called Dans un bois solitaire. So every time I look at this piece, because it's been hanging in the museum for many years, hmm. every time I look at this piece, I imagine it singing something like, um, uh, Dans un bois solitaire et sombre, je me promène. <laughs> so that was why I chose. No, you can't. Wait, I did not expect that to happen. You couldn't see me. I was like hitting my voice chair button, like trying to turn around for you. Like, um, but thank you, everybody, so much. This has been such a fun panel. Guarding the Art at the Baltimore Museum of Art is in its final month. The exhibit concludes July 10th. Admission is totally free, so there's no reason to say you can't go. Okay, Miss Pat? <laughs>